Okay. So I'm trying to find our friend Soham, uh, someone who can, uh, who wants to offer a volunteer because uh, our friend uh, Sohan is not around. <laughs> Just in case, uh, I don't see anything on the thing on the on the on the chat, or I am disconnected. Or we can just hold on for a bit to see if Soham will join. Okay, cool. So let's crack on to part A. Welcome to part A. And the first thing we'll cover in part A, the first notion, is the notion of basis. So giving a topological space, a collection um a sub collection of the um, uh, topology is called a basis or just a base if for any open set in the topology there is a sub collection indexed by uh, an arbitrary set i this could be finite this could be infinite or countable or uncountable okay such that uh, the open sets can be uh, decomposed as a union of these uh, this uh, sub collection okay so that's it that's essentially what uh, a basis in the topological sense, in the abstract topological sense is, is a collection, a sub-collection of, uh, um, of the topology, uh, where whenever you have any open set, you can always find a sub-collection of, of in, in B, such that uh, the open set is a union of that collection, okay? So here's uh, the thing, uh, is this uh, therefore, is T itself uh, trivially a uh, uh, basis? Yes or no? <laughs> because for any open set, uh, we can make uh, uh, B prime, uh, the empty set and uh, um, O itself, because O is open, so therefore it's uh, is, 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 is a valid choice, right? You agree? <laughs> this is very trivial, very boring. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, more interesting example is this one, okay? For example, if uh, X is R, R2, um, equipped with the standard topology um, induced by the Euclidean metric D, then the claim is that uh, this thing here, the set of all open balls in R2 uh, form a basis, okay? So you can start to see why uh, open balls uh, are very important in the thing in the, in the in the metric topology because in general, actually, that's uh, on giving any metric space, um, the collection of all open balls on the metric space uh, indeed form a basis for the metric topology. Okay. Let me check the chat. I hope you can still hear me, right? <laughs> Yes? Or am I gone? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, you can still hear me. Thank you, CJ. Okay, so I hope the definition is not uh, confusing. I mean, it's like a straightforward, right? You you have the, you have, uh, the topology, obviously, the, uh, you have also the, the, the thing, uh, uh, the, the collection, it's just a matter of checking if the collection has a sub collection that uh, you know giving any open set um, you can always find a sub collection of that collection uh, where o can be decomposed as this as a union of those um, elements of the the thing the sub collection okay so this is very important. Here's a very important comment that uh, in this section, this is this is what I want you to keep in mind. So as you can see from the definition, as I was saying, the index, uh, let me go back again. So in principle, <laughs> this I here can be countable and uncountable, right? So you could have, in, in fact, B, B can be a, a countable and uncountable uh, set, okay? So, okay. So in principle, um, this can be uh, uncountable, okay? But when it B is countable, which is what in most cases in applied and useful thing, practical thing that you want, the topological space is, is called second countable, okay? So it's a second countable if, um, 
it has a basis uh, that's uh, countable. Okay, you guys, you know, set theory one one countable, meaning that uh, you can put it in bijection with a subset of uh, uh, the natural numbers, right? That could be the entire natural number themselves, right? So yeah, so essentially you can count count them, right? <laughs> it's very useful to be able to count stuff, right? So this is very important because in the manifold section, this is one of the uh, important uh, assumptions that we have to make is that the topological space uh, that uh, the manifolds have to be second countable topological spaces. Yeah, another one is, as you will see, is also Hausdorff. It has to be Hausdorff, okay? Um, here's a question. I don't want you to answer, but just uh, go and uh, think about this. Uh, with vector spaces, uh, there is also a notion of basis. So this leads us to the notion of uh, dimension. So the question is, uh, can we similarly uh, define the notion of uh, dimension for topological spaces? <laughs> Who thinks yes? <laughs> Okay, just, just hold the thought, yeah. As we go along, uh, maybe not this session or even uh, the next se session, you will be able to, uh, to, to see. Okay, so there's someone who thinks yes. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see if you don't change your mind as we go along, maybe not this session, even uh, the next session. <laughs> who else thinks we can uh, define a notion of uh, uh, dimension? for abstract in general uh, topological spaces. Okay, CJ also says yes, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, George is saying metrical spaces can be given a dimension, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll leave this, let's, uh, let's see how we, how, uh, whether you change your mind as we go along. Okay, maybe not this session in the next few sessions, but it's a very interesting um, uh, notion. I mean, very interesting question. Okay, so here's a, a basis challenge for you. So the first one, first of all, I hope, <laughs> I, I, I was rushing to do the slide. So the first thing you have to check is whether this is indeed a topology. I, looking at it, I think it's a topology, but uh, <laughs> if it's not a topology, then uh, I, I will ask you to, uh, to, uh, to correct it, you know, make it a topology and then, you know, go through this the, the, the stuff here. Okay, so, the, uh, so this is, in this case, this is a finite set, of course. And then the question is which of them, and maybe all of them, you know, you never know, uh, is a, uh, is uh, forms a basis for this uh, topology. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the first talent. The second one is, if you consider the reals R, the question is whether uh, it is true that the product uh, topology R times R is the same as the standard topology uh, on R2. So does the product coincide with the R2? That's, that's, uh, that's, that's the, the second challenge. And even more interestingly, for those of you who want to, uh, you know, adventure even more, is whether we can generalize this to Rn. So whether Rn, uh, uh, the metric topology in Rn, is equivalent to the uh, individual to this uh, product of R n times. Okay. Another challenge is this: consider B itself a basis for the topology. So B, uh, this B is basis. Uh, of, of this topology. And then let's consider this TB to be the union of all open sets in B. So the challenge for you is that uh, to verify that TB is a topology on X. And another question is whether the two spaces, so X uh, with, the, with the original topology is isomorphic, uh, sorry, homeomorphic to, uh, to the thing, to the TB topology. <laughs> to the basis topology. So this topology is called the uh, topology generated by the basis or basis topology. Let me check the chat. I hope I haven't. Okay. I see some interesting discussions uh, where uh, uh, Bob is saying, no, not for every possible space. That's interesting comment. Uh, we'll come to that. I claim that some of you will change your mind as we go along, maybe not this session, in the next sessions, we'll see. <laughs> okay, so I leave this challenge uh, with you. It's really important that you try to do this, you know, uh, this thing, this is really the, uh, the only way, especially for those of you new to these things, this is how you, 
you internalize with this uh, these uh, abstract stuff, especially before we get to the manifolds. Actually, there's a uh, uh, Okay, there is, there's, a, there's a, I, I forgot uh, because uh, I was in, in, when I was preparing the slides, the order meant to be different. I meant to introduce the product and then the basis, but uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. At this stage, you don't know what the, uh, the, the thing, the product topology is. Uh, I claim uh, in, in the next slide, in the next uh, segment of the, this part, you will know what the product topology is, and then you will be able to, to, to do this, okay? <laughs> um, Okay, so before we go to the product topology, I'll just remind you, so given two topological spaces, this is just, uh, I'll call the underlying sets, their Cartesian product will be denoted like this. This is set theory 101, you know what the Cartesian product is. Another remark that I want to make is that I will take a shortcut for the definition of product. Normally in the textbooks, it's uh, a little bit more uh, abstract because they want to cover in the case where uh, you, you, know, you have an uh, infinite product, you know, uh, possibly uncountable product and these things. Purposes uh, certainly in the application in the, in the applied side of things. You know, you you only want uh, finally uh, finitely uh, many uh, products. You know, you want like a product of three spaces, four spaces, and so on. You know, you don't want infinite products in in a way. But uh, nevertheless, I claim for the finitely many products, um, the definition, the shortcut that I will take is equivalent to the to the thing to the one that. Um, you will probably encounter in the on the thing on the on the on the test book okay so here's the definition so we say a subset of the cartesian product so we start first by defining what does it mean to be an open set in on the cartesian product when you are giving a a, a topology okay so sorry when you are giving uh, two sets so forget uh, forget for a moment uh, so um, not forget for a moment. So, uh, so T one is a topology on 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 a thing on 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 X. Uh, T two is a topology on Y. So we say a subset of the Cartesian product is open if for any uh, pair um, uh, of uh, elements in, in 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 P, there are two open sets. Okay, the first one is in on the thing on the first uh, on on T one. The other one on T two. And they satisfy this. So X is in the in the thing in O1 and Y is in O2. Okay. And most importantly, if you take the Cartesian product of the two open sets, you will find that they are contained in P. Okay. So this is a lazy, <laughs> the lazy apps, uh, the thing, uh, the shortcut. So the claim is this, this product, so given two topological spaces. This, uh, this the set of all open sets on the Cartesian product is is uh, such that uh, uh, sorry the set of all p's on the cartesian product such that p is open is a topology on the cartesian product okay so this i claim this is called uh, this is what we call product topology okay so this will be equivalent to the to the to the thing to the to the abstract definition you will probably see on the textbook but for finitely many uh, many um, uh, many products okay for finite products not infinite okay um, so the question is whether you can generalize this for any, obviously we are dealing with two, two spaces. The question is, uh, can you generalize this to, uh, you know, uh, K number of spaces? Okay. I claim, yes, you can do this and I'm sure you can do this. And another question <laughs> is whether it's true if, uh, X and Y are Hausdorff spaces, then their product, uh, as per the definition, is also uh, Hausdorff. I will leave this for you. And another question is, if this definition here, uh, so this collection here defined like this, whether this forms a, a, a thing, a basis for the product topology, okay? So here's an example. I claim this, uh, for example, uh, a cylinder. I hope I didn't get this uh, wrong, but nevertheless, a cylinder can be uh, a, a, cylinder, a cylinder. <laughs> a cylinder can be uh, uh, viewed as, you know, a product, as a product space of the circle 
you know what uh, the circle is, which is this guy here, the unit circle, and the unit interval. I made a picture here for you to kind of, uh, uh, you know, try to picture stuff. By the way, when you try to do, uh, this is where I encourage you a lot to do uh, pictures, you know, especially with other uh, spaces too. But it's very important. This hopefully will give you an, an overview of uh, of the thing, you know. So on this axis here, you have the eye, the, the, the unit interval, and then on this, you have the circle. So the claim is that uh, the cylinder indeed is uh, is is a thing is can be represented as a Cartesian as as a product space of the, the 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 circle and the unit interval, right? Because both the circle and the unit interval are topologies uh, as are topological spaces, right? Inherited from the from the thing from the uh, the standard topology of the respective uh, uh, in the case of um, uh, the circle, uh, it in inherits the, the topology from R two, whereas the unit circle. Sorry, the unit uh, interval and inherits the topology from from R. Okay. Um, money construction. This is where you have to wrap your uh, your head around uh, uh, products because many important topological spaces are indeed uh, constructed via the product. So you uh, you identify an existing topological space, two interesting topological spaces. You take their product to generate another uh, topological space. For example, the unit square, for instance, uh, the torus, you know, the donor or the donors, as uh, you know, we, uh, it's uh, it's also known, is also a product can be seen as a product of uh, the, the circle. And indeed, if you take uh, the product of the circle n times, then you will have the n torus. Okay. So, as a challenge in terms of uh, products, I I I hope you can uh, you know. Um, go around taking the product of some interesting subspaces of Rn. Let's just make n to be two, three, and four, okay? Because I know some physicists uh, on the audience, so four would be like, uh, obviously, space-time. <laughs> space-time has four dimensions, so you know it will be interesting if you can construct uh, some interesting stuff, subspaces of uh, R4 that are product. Uh, okay. Let me check. So far, this is easy stuff. I mean, it takes a bit of time for you guys to internalize with this. Now you can see why it's very. Uh, it was very uh, useful to uh, define this concept when we already have like concrete stuff to work with, as opposed to doing it in the abstract, right? If we were doing it the the product stuff in the in the thing in the in the, in the point set topology. Uh, without uh, having, um, you know, uh, without using the, the, the thing, this uh, the metric uh, uh, topology, uh, you wouldn't be able to see it. It's very hard to see like useful stuff. Okay, so another very important thing is the notion. So when you have a product uh, space, uh, we can define uh, two very interesting maps. Uh, normally, people in test books they don't write this pi; they write p, like uh, you know, they put p x. But I write pi uh, because this is the notation that uh, if we cover fiber bundles, this is what's uh, what's used. So you can get uh, familiarize yourself with the, with, the, with, the, with the notation. Okay. So uh, given a product space, uh, you have pi x that goes from the Cartesian space to the to the thing to the to the to the space x defined like this. Okay. Similarly, you have one that define uh, goes from uh, pi pi y that goes from the Cartesian product to y defined like this. Okay. So these two maps are called projection maps. They are projections. So this is very important. That uh, I know this is at the moment is very simple, but it's actually uh, it's very powerful thing that uh, you need to feel comfortable with um, because both product topology and also these type of uh, constructions. Are the ones that will open the doors for you in terms of uh, you know um, uh, having uh, you know a smooth transition to start thinking about fiber bundles. Okay, so the the claim is that the projection maps are indeed continuous maps, right? Because you know this is a product space, it's a topological space. The individual sp uh, spaces also are topological spaces. So the claim is that uh, these are continuous maps. You know what are continuous maps? We uh, we, we we cover that. So. I'll leave this as a challenge for you. Let me check the chat. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. Okay. 
I will ask again, just in case, because my networking, uh, my network is a bit unreliable. So you can still hear me, right? I'm, I'm not just blah, blah, blah stuff, blah, blah, blahing or whatever it's called. <laughs> Can you still hear me? Yes, okay. Okay, please let me know, chat, uh, type on the chat if uh, everything is okay. Likewise with the slides. Okay, so here's an example, using the example of the product that we constructed before uh, of the uh, unit interval in the circle you can see here, so this is the, the thing, the pi S1. So this is a projection that goes from the product space, from the cylinder to the circle. So here's an example. So you have the point X here, and then the same with the, with the thing with the, with the pi uh, I that goes to the, to, the ten, to the unit interval. So yeah, so I encourage you to, to, to build more product spaces and build more projections for you to see how these things work. 